I'm Gina Mancuso. Um, I started at ABS when I was six years old. So that was when it opened back in 97. Um, and then I graduated ABS when I was 18 in 2009. And then I went on to Red Rocks after that. I wasn't exactly sure what I wanted to do after ABS. So that was kind of the, the next step I decided to take to kind of try some classes out, see if anything stuck. Um, and then after going there for a while, my dad was like, well, why don't you try a programming class? And I was like, okay, I guess I could try a programming class. Like at that point, nothing else had really jumped out at me or anything. So I took it and I liked it. And I was like, okay, this seems like a good, a good path to go down. I'm, I'm pretty confident I can get a job in this, this career field. So I transferred to Metro and I got a computer science degree from Metro State in 2017. I remember it was, it was small at that point. There was, I think they said 12 students when we started out. Um, I remember there being a bunch of kids my age, which I loved and we played all day. <laughs> um, I remember it being just a lot of fun to come to school every day. It was definitely something like I looked forward to. But yeah, I, I remember it fondly. It was definitely um, a fun time in, in my life. I think, and I kind of think of it this way. It's like there's there's kind of three different stages. Um, in like people's schooling at ABS, um, I've talked to a couple other people about it too, and they kind of tend to agree. It's like when you're, for me, it was when I was young, but also like if you're older and you just first start out here as you're a little bit older too, you go through that kind of first phase of just like exploring and doing whatever you want. And this is so fun. And it's just like playtime. And then after a while you start kind of getting like your second phase, you get more curious about like diving deeper into different aspects of the school. Um, and so you take on more like responsibilities and things and, and you kind of like kind of come into your own as far as like what you might want to participate in and what you want to contribute to. Um, and then kind of the final phase is once you've been doing that for a while, you start to see things that you would maybe like to change or that aren't really working well as far as like your opinion. Um, and then you kind of make strides to change that and like build on um, kind of like your legacy a little bit. I was school meeting chair for, I believe, five years. It was quite a while. Um, I enjoyed doing that. It was like a big prestigious title for not as much work as JC Clerk. So I, <laughs> I appreciated that part of it. I also was part of Travel Corporation, which stemmed from a geography class that a few of my friends and I took. And then we were studying um, Europe at the time. And Larry, who was teaching us, had actually like gone to England quite a few times. And and so we were just completely like enthralled with that. We're like, we have to go. We have to go to England. Um, and so we started this travel corporation so we could start raising money to get to England, which unfortunately we did not do because um, we were there was like five of us. <laughs> but we did. We did actually manage to raise quite a bit of money. And we ended up going to the Four Corners instead, which was it was a lot of fun. I remember a big project I kind of took on um, was like cleaning up the building because we inherited this building. Um, well, we didn't inherit it. <laughs> um, we bought this building and we kind of had a lot of stuff in storage just like all over the place. Um, and I was like, we don't, we don't need to have all this stuff. We can open this stuff up and we can clean this up and we can have these rooms look a lot nicer. So I kind of took lead on that. And I was also part of aesthetics and use committee, which is in charge of all of that. And I don't remember which came first, but um, but that was a big a big project that I did. I think the main things I gained from here were just like being a part of a community that I cared about and that cared about me, and also being like responsible for myself from a very young age and being respected to like have the autonomy to make my own decisions. Um, which isn't really afforded to kids in a lot of situations. Um, but yeah, ever since I was six, I was deciding when I would eat lunch, which a lot of times was right after I got to school <laughs> when I was really little <laughs> and when I would go outside and play and when I needed to rest and when I could use the bathroom. And that was like, and like what I wanted to learn and who I wanted to learn it from and with and um, when I needed breaks and when I was ready to like come back to things and, and when I was done with them, like if I decided I wasn't ready to, or if when I wasn't interested in different things anymore, 
I was able to just let those go and move on to, to new things. And so while I never found like a passion that I would say was like driving me career wise, um, I did try a lot of different stuff and I learned a lot of different things from it. Immediately after graduation, I went to Red Rocks Community College. So I took that admissions test to get in, um, which I believe was three parts. I think there were two parts, English and then a math. And I was very nervous about that because since I had gone to ABS since I was six, I didn't really know how well I would like stack up in like a public traditional school setting. Um, but I did fine. Like I, I, I scored well enough to get right into um, like college level English. And I was just one level below the math. After coming from ABS, when I was making all of my own decisions about what I would learn and how I would learn and how often and, and like all the different, I was in charge of like all of it, basically. Um, it was a lot easier to have someone else tell you like, okay, these are the, the times the class is going to be. Here's the lesson plan for each day. Here's what I need you to do for each thing. Here's how you do each of those things. Um, so it was not difficult. Um, and I also had the advantage of seeing adults and professors and teachers as equal. And so I did not have kind of that barrier that I feel like some kids have for like talking to teachers and asking them for help. Um, so that, that wasn't, that wasn't a barrier for me. So I was, I was well prepared in that, that sense. When you don't know something at ABS, you just ask about it. And like, it was pretty clear in college who you were supposed to ask about what things. And then once you kind of have that, um, path that you're going on, then it's, then it's pretty easy to get back on, back on track with stuff. So yeah, no, I never really felt like I was out of my, my depth or anything. College is, it's a lot of work, but it's also very doable. Like it's, it's, it's broken down in ways that like step-by-step -step plans that are, that are easy to follow, even if like the work is hard. And if you have that foundation of doing what you want to do, knowing what you want to do, and that's being put behind this, like you've got the motivation to succeed. You have the resources. I think the most important thing I learned is that I'm important. And I'm gonna get a little emotional about that because like sometimes you don't really feel important, you know? But if you have that support system in place, that's like always reassuring you like, yes, you're important, your voice is important. Even from when you're like six years old, like we will listen to you as like attentively and like put as much weight behind your feelings and your story as we would to like any adult out there. Um, that really reinforces that like, no, I'm, I'm important, I'm worthy and I can do it.